Uh, today we're going to talk about are we over-radiating patients across the nation. <clears throat> so um, I think you'll enjoy this presentation and that we're all going to learn from it. Alright, so upon completion of this presentation, everybody will be able to discuss at least three components of x-ray history, discuss signs and symptoms of radiation sickness, and as well as discuss new technology and procedures, performance of the cath lab. You can also, you can also see me. Alright, and the cath lab contributes to that contributes a high dose of radiation. Um, with three things regarding overexposure to radiation, as well as identifying other methods of reducing radiation to patients and ourselves. Alright, so our following outline. So we're going to discuss history of x-ray, radiation and war. So radiation today <coughs> in the cath lab signs and symptoms of overexposure. How can we decrease exposure? All right, so history of x-rays. All right, so besides the x-ray or the technical staff, who discovered x-rays? Dr. Kirby? No. Re Rankin. Who? Rankin. Yes. All right. Yes. And does anybody know how they were discovered? Wait, wait, no, I don't. I thought, but I thought, I thought, I thought it was Madame Curie before, slightly before him. No? No. no. Matt, well, Madame Curie had to deal with like the actual, uh, like, like the nuclear med, like as far as like particles and things of that sort. So. Still, you know, still kind of the same spectrum. And what was some of the technology used? All right, so here he is, Wilhelm Rinken. So he's the one who discovered x-rays all the way back in 1895 in, in Germany. Oh. Yeah, let's go back here. All right. All right. All right, so it was an accident. So one day, you know, he's working in his lab. You know, and he's like, uh, you know, it's almost almost dinner time. This is the kind of thing how it, how it went down. It's almost, almost supper time. He's like, just one more experiment, you know, the, the wife's got supper on the table. So, you know, just, just one more experiment, and all of a sudden he noticed something glowing in the distance. When he energized the tube, he's like, hey, that's, that's pretty neat. So, so again, this was an accidental discovery. Um, also, what does the letter X stand for in algebraic <coughs> equation? So x, you know, x plus 5 equals, so x is the unknown. We don't know what x is, so x is the unknown ray. All right. And rays move, rays are the energy that moves in a straight line, like waves and particles. All right, so technology in the early 1900s. So, during this time, they had what was called static generators. So, our equipment, our equipment right now, uh, voltage comes in from the power lines, and they have step-up transformers inside of the equipment. So, so these transformers boost, boost up your KVP, which is the punch that the x-ray has. So, KVP is kilovoltage peak. Okay, now also think of KVP as quality. This is the quality of the beam. Okay, so, so the, these operated at very low KVP, very low MA. So it took, it took a long time to get an exposure. So like I was saying, 
you know, the equipment that we use now, you know, you have a lot of KVP because you have a lot of power. So 80, 80 KVP is 80,000 kilovolts. So that's what you're putting through, you know, our x-ray tube. So that's why it gets so hot. You know, we're operating at 80, at 125. So that's a lot of voltage. So milliamperage is, is, is quantity. So how, how much energy do you want to send down? So also, way back when, they also had intensifying screens. So what intensifying screens did was that it actually turned the x-ray energy into light energy. So again, your reduction you know, went down. So, so this was a great step in reducing radiation exposure. It also uh, had glass plates coated with emulsion, and that's, and that's what held like the silver halide crystals, and that's how you get your picture. So again, emulsion film was created, um, and uh, we had cellulose nitrate. So they discovered that that was a pretty flammable. So improper storage, and you know, to blue it, you, you got a fire. So in the 1960s, polyester was the better choice because it lasted longer. You know, it was flimsy, and so great technology. All right, so here, here's another interesting fact. Thomas Edison, <coughs> he invented the fluoroscope. So who, who, was, who was the first x-ray fatality in the United States? All right, Clarence Daly. He died in 1904, and he was Thomas Edison's assistant. All right, so again, what is radiation? So what do you think, what's in your mind, what's, what do you think for radiation? Okay, anybody, anybody have a guess or? You're thinking nuclear stuff, all right, that's good. All right, so. The Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines it as the process of emitting radiant energy. Um, also, um, okay, so here you have Clarence, Clarence Daly. So in 1904, they discovered that, oh, oh boy, you know, this stuff is hazardous. Clarence, Clarence Daly actually, his arms got amputated because he was exposed so much, and then, and then, you know, eventually died. But uh, radiologists, you know, they have their hands under the X-ray beam, and they lose their fingers. They get severe dermatitis, skin <coughs> reddening, and you know, they thought, "Wow, this stuff, is, this stuff, is bad." So, you know, so they started doing protective measures. So, and here, here's a wonderful display of Thomas Edison horoscoping uh, his partner. And look, like, they're, they're not wearing lead. So, you know, his back's probably not hurting, but his skin will fall off. <laughs> so. All right, so radiation at the extreme level, all right? So this is, think, think big, think nuclear, you know, think, you know, Terminator 2. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, here's, a, here's a movie clip that I pulled off. All right, let me move this over here. This is 
bear with me, folks. <clears throat> so it looks like the website kicked me off. So does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so events through history regarding radiation exposure. So you got World War II, you got Chernobyl, and you got uh, the Fukushima nuclear reactor. So, you know, we've all heard of, uh, you know, Nagasaki and Hiroshima and things, things of that sort that's happened throughout history. So here's uh, here's some pictures. So. Of course, you got the big mushroom clouds. You got the nuclear reactor at, at Chernobyl. Let me get my pointer out. Okay. So you got the nuclear reactor. Oh yeah. All right. All right. And again, you know the the Fukushima power plant. Uh, recently had the, the big giant tsunami and um, all these fail-saves, all these fail-saves didn't work. And um, all this uh, radiation dumped into the sea and a lot of the sea life around the area has also, also been radiated. Okay. I'm not supposed to go back. There we go. All right, so, so again, now, um, one, one interesting thing I read is that they, uh, uh, there was a study conducted, and this study informs us that if 300 nuclear warheads was sent from Russia here to the United States, that about 75 to a million people would die from the, from the initial blast and the amount of heat. So 75 to 100 million. Now, the rest would die from starvation um, as well as radiation sickness. And vice versa if we send a bunch of nukes over to Russia or Europe. So, you know, this is bad stuff. Um, they also, they, I also learned that at, at Chernobyl, all 134 patients actually had bone marrow depression. So, so the folks that went in to, to clean up the site, you know, they all they all suffered from this. Uh, Nineteen of them had the radiation dermatitis, uh, GI complications, and the most the most grays the most grays that they got was about sixteen grays. So, so that's a lot. So and and. And we understand grades a little bit because you know that's what that's what we read off of our off of our our, our AKs, you know, on our on our monitors. So acute radiation syndrome sickness. So what what exactly is it? Okay, uh, 
this. So f following these chain of events, so, it's, so this is what happens. You have hematologic death, GI death, as well as central nervous system death. <laughs> so if you have central nervous system death, you also got this and you got this. So yeah. All right, so, so when we're thinking of nuclear, nuclear explosions, think of total body, total body exposure. So holy cow, my whole body just got radiated. You know, in the cath lab, we deal with, you know, focal, you know, a little area of tissue. You know, but think, think big, think your whole body is getting zapped. All right, so, so here, here's some interesting math here. So 100 rads, equals one gray. And here's our little conversion table. Alright, so hematologic syndrome, what it destroys? Well, it destroys your platelets and your white your white <coughs> blood cells and also red blood cells. And uh, your white blood cells are very radio sensitive. So so very, uh, very radio sensitive, meaning that they just they don't like radiation, and they, and, and they die. <clears throat> so uh, th this occurs, this occurs at approximately about 200 to 1,000 rads. Um, at, at 25 rads, you can, you know, you can start exhibiting signs and symptoms, um, and. Some of these symptoms you know, can be vomiting, uh, and uh, as well as fatigue and weakness. So again, think whole body. My whole body is getting zapped. All right. So GI GI syndrome. So this destroys the lining of your intestines. So basically. Uh, your body is unable to absorb nutrients. And our cells, we're all full of cells, <coughs> and our cells need nutrients in order to live and survive. So if it destroys the lining, the lining of your intestines, you can't absorb any nutrients. So this occurs at about 1,000 to 5,000 rads. And uh, some of the signs and symptoms of this is vomiting, diarrhea, you know, loss of appetite, um, and then death within about four to ten days. How's a so a little a different topic? How how's the cheesecake? Good. Yeah. All right. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So uh, central nervous system syndrome. All right, so basically this affects your <coughs> central nervous system. So uh, this is also a sudden, sudden onset. Uh, this occurs at about 5,000 rads and, and higher. So some of the signs and symptoms of this is that you know, patients are confused. They have burning of their skin. Um, it's uh, they become unconscious. Uh, you also have intracranial pressure as well. All right, so um, here, here's a chart uh, that kind of explains um, as, as to uh, acute radiation sickness or syndrome. You know, like, uh, for example, severe here in the middle. Four to six grays, you know, you're going to get high fever, infections, bleeding. So yeah, so so this is a nice little chart to kind of you know, get get more of a concept of how serious this stuff can be. So uh, any any questions so far? All right, everyone's good. So from like, like yeah. So from my knowledge, like if you get like a, a cancer treatment, they also give you like a film batch, and then uh, and then you know they're treating a local a local area, 
and it's, it's highly monitored. Um, so I, I'll, I'll check on that, but I'm about 98% sure that's, that's, how they, that's how they monitor how much you, like, you would get or I would get. All right, so uh, today in the cath lab, you know, you know, we, we dispense a lot of radiation. But we also, we do a lot of great things here. You know, we do high-risk PCI, um, radio approaches. You know, patients can get more radiation. You know, we do web sandwiches, pellets, um, CTOs. You know, we, we do a lot here. All right, so here's a good example of a high-risk PCI. You got, you got the double wires, you got the double wires going on. You got a stent being deployed here. Um, okay, bifurcating. Let's see. All right, so we'll go to the next one. All right, so again, you know, we're talking about, you know, radiation exposure. Uh, here's some more, here's some more pictures. All right, so the lesion's about right here. Yeah, now it's all nice and open. So, so great blood flow to the heart. That's, that's, that's outstanding. So again, looking at these side by side, you know, we can then see you know, the before and after. Alright. So here's a RCA that's included about right here. There's probably a big big clot in there. Probably like, oh, I feel so much better already. You know, when when can I eat? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. When when <coughs> when can I eat? So so again, you know, this this is kind of showing us again, you know, that you know all the great things that we do every day. So here's some more, you know, here's some more interesting, interesting images, you know, just some, you know, your left coronary artery system. And here's a, the pumping station of your heart. <clears throat> All right, so again, you know, we also fix these as well. You know, these big, giant triple A's. So yeah. Yeah, so that's just that's just massive. All right. So again, talking about talking about triple A's. You know, we've been in the cases where sometimes it's about thirty minutes. Wham, bam. You know, we're out. And other times. You know, like an hour, two hours, three hours later, you know, you're still in there, you know, working hard to to get that graph where it needs to be. Okay, so we got your fingers here. You got your pigtail, pigtail up. So this is where we're un, um, unsheathing the endograph. So you can kind of see it starting to unravel here. And that's just going to cover 
you know, reinforce these walls. You know, give it strength so it don't rupture. And when we're all finished, it looks like this. You got nice flow to the to the kidneys. It's very important, and uh, the, the recovery time is is, is a lot quicker. <clears throat> okay, next slide. So again, web salvage. You know, web salvage. Again, you know, this sometimes requires a lot of radiation. We're in there for hours. We're, you know, our heads are right next to the image intensifier. You know, as you're trying to work under it and not get your hands exposed. You know, it's 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 very tricky and challenging. So again, you know, you see the blockages and the stenosis and you know, there's not a lot of blood flow to the distal portion of the leg. Okay, why does this keep going back? Okay, let's go forward, buddy. Forward, forward, okay. All right, there we go. So again, now, you know, it's a lot more open. We got we got flow, you know, so I, I think I can hear the tissue healing already. <laughs> All right, so, so again, you know, here's a, here's a runoff. All right, so camera's moving, and if you notice the SFAs are missing. Then they reconnect about right here. And you got all these little helper arteries rerouting blood flow around it. But again, you know, this patient's, you know, probably been in a lot of pain for a while, uh, has a hard time walking. Okay, so radiation is increasing. So 30%, 30% of cardiac imaging, or let me rephrase that. 
Yeah, 30% 30, 30 of the x-rays are coming from cardiac imaging. So that's, so that's big. Because, you know, like, you know, look at all the stuff that we do every day. You know, I mean, we help a lot of people. Uh, it also, it's also increased by a factor of six from 1980 to about now. So, and, and it's increasing as our catheters get smaller. Um, so, we're doing a lot of good stuff. Great stuff. All right. All right, so moving on. So rack and cat on fluoroscopy equipment. So, so, so rack is the air karma at a reference point. Okay, what what does that mean? All right, and um, cap is air karma area product. So, so this is like the energy. It's it's a way of saying okay, well this amount this amount of energy will be in this amount of tissue. So it's kind of a measurement as to a way of how the machine is able to, to calculate all that. So, so it can be measured. Now also to take into account is, is your field of view. So if, if you watch, if you watch today, so if you're on a, you know, a 48 mag, and as, you know, as, as the doc's plurling and you, Increase the mag. Watch your numbers at the bottom, and you'll see them increase. You'll see them increase. I was I was doing that the other day. You know, like, oh, okay, well, it is increasing. So, so also another thing to think about is your is the technique. You know, the technical factors of the X-ray machine, and also the angulation, the angulation of the tube. So. So again, so if you're going through more tissue, you know, that's more, that's more x-ray beam that's got to get through there, you know, in order to get your image. So also take that into consideration. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, we do a lot of people, you know, that, you know, are heavy. So... So, and as you notice, the doctor will shallow up the angle and make a little clearer picture. All right, um, so, and another thing, how long has a machine been operating? So, there's another, there's another consideration. All right, so, so, so this is it on, on the Phillips machine. So think of it like a dashboard on a car. So the rack rate is the dose. So I mash it on the gas, and these numbers are ticking away right here. Just a tick. All right, so, um, and your, your cumulative rack is like your odometer. Okay, so how much did I use at the end of the case? So my question is, is that you know we're all we're documenting this in Epic, but where does all that information go? Does it just sit in a computer somewhere? You know, I mean, is it is it evaluated? Who who handles that? Maybe so, it's looked at later on if the patient shows up with symptoms of radiation sickness or whatever. Okay. Maybe that's when it's looked at. Oh, like if they got a rash, mm -hmm. maybe? They'll look back and see how much they, if it's related to the radiation or if okay. it's something else. Okay. Maybe, that's just a... Yeah, so that's a thought. Okay. Thought. Right, so... All right, why is this going backwards? I want to go forward. There we go. So, <laughs> so if it was a challenger, you know, it would be extensive. And yes. And, <laughs> right. So and and by the way, this is a, a V8. Oh, okay. Right. How old is that picture? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Is that your Facebook picture? Yeah, is it? It looks like a profile picture. Yeah. Yeah, this is my Facebook picture. Yeah, and you know, it looks nice and warm outside. Okay. All right, so the aftermath. <coughs> Let me get a drink here for a second. All right, so, you know, so, you know, here's a scary fact. You know, cardiologists are often unaware that excessive fluoro or excessive exposure, you know, you get skin injuries. And, you know, our patients are subject to these skin injuries. So hospitals and cardiologists can be held accountable that patients can get from radiation burns and suit for damages. Um, Jayco, Jayco also added a list of Sentinel events so that if a patient gets 1,500 rads in a single, you know, a single exp exposure or if you get a radiation treatment, you know, 25% of it you know, is, is you know they, they treat the wrong thing. You know that's a that's a sentinel event. All right, so so here's a here's a perfect case example. So I'd say this this would be a typical patient that, that we that we see almost every day. So 48 year old man. You know he's had angiograms in the past. 272 pounds, and um, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so so I'm going to read this. So about two weeks later, he noted a painful, a painful square rash on his right lower back. Okay, so n nobody really could figure out. What was wrong with it? Okay. So this progressed to a superficial skin loss, so with pain and tenderness. And uh, during the months without any sign of healing, it became infected, uh, had bloody discharge. He had multiple dermatologic evaluations, including biopsy, um, and nobody could make the diagnosis. Nobody could figure it out. And there was no response to any treatment, including antibiotics or steroids. So eight months later, after his PTCA, he was referred to a major medical center, and the diagnosis was made, and an extensive excision and skin flap reconstruction was performed. So yeah, so so it went from that, and then he had to have it reconstructed. But the scary part is nobody nobody could figure it out. He, you have a question? No. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So when you know if you know if they said if they said okay, well you did have excessive fluoro. Let me let me back up here. <coughs> So again, he had 20 minutes, 20 minutes of fluoroscopy, only 20 minutes. Um, I was watching a case uh, a couple weeks ago. At 13 minutes, it, it hit two grays on the on the monitor. After 13 minutes, but we don't give him a letter till 40 minutes now. <clears throat> so. so, should we be giving the letter at 40 minutes, or should we be giving the letter at when it hit two grades. So, and you know, Dr. Fishbein, um, you know, he's uh, he's been reading and doing some extensive research about you know radiation safety. So I think I think he does a good job as far as you know being concerned and, and, and being aware of this. Okay, let's let's go forward. Okay, there we go. All right. So again, here, here's another example. So again, um, 141 kilograms. 
uh, about 50, 52 minutes of 4 0. Now, this guy hit 22 grades. So that's, that is extensive. Very extensive. So six weeks later, <coughs> rash developed. Six months later. So, and there's, there's his injury. <coughs> So, uh, it, it was a complex procedure, but still though, you know, um, this, this individual still has pain from, from uh, having his uh, procedure done. So he still has pain. Yes? Okay, but on RCRs, the x-ray, the radiation actually comes out below the table. Yes. It comes up through the patient to the eye, eye above the patient. Yes. So their crash will be much more likely on their back, their chest. Correct. Yep. Because of distance. Okay. Yep. That's correct. <clears throat> so another thing that's disturbing is that is that sometimes patients get misdiagnosed and they have exploratory surgery. So they say, well, you're having this pain. Well, you know, I think we need to go in there and see what's causing your pain. When, you know, when all that could have been prevented and they said, you know, you know, you may have gotten a severe dose of radiation. And uh, skin, and skin injuries develop weeks, you know, it develops weeks, weeks afterwards. Because it takes, it takes, it takes time for this to develop. So if you think, you know, our skin's repairing itself, and uh, what happens is, is that that radiation kills, like, kills the cells that's making new cells. You know, it's like taking, you know, <coughs> taking the factory out of business. You know, they can't produce any more cars, for example. You know, because the machines broke. Well, then you can't produce any, any skin. All right, um, I'll, I'll have this, um, I'll hang out this chart, I'll pass it around. Look at that, but here's a, here's a nice chart that kind of explains, you know, as to how, how many grades that you get, you know, and kind of, you know, what, what, what you're probably going to see. So, very, um, very nice flow chart. So again, you know, two grades of radiation, you know, you get, you know, you get skin reddening. And I'm sure if we went upstairs after someone got two grades, a couple hours later and looked at their back, we'd probably see it. I know we would. All right, so here's, here, here's something else that I found interesting. So patients that have diabetes, uh, hyperthyroidism, collagen vascular disease, and ataxia to angioectasia. Yes, there's the fancy word of the day right there. So that's uh, th this is just uh, like dilated, like dilated blood vessels. So that's a fancy name for that. <clears throat> All right, so this this actually lowers the threshold poor radiation of your skin. And also these medications as well. You know, and a lot of people are on that to lower your cholesterol. Alright, so what what can we do about it? Alright, so from my perspective, I believe that four nurses, four nurses need to be educated to understand, you know, what to look for. You know, um, you know, the patient might have something red on their back, and they go, "Oh, well, that's probably, probably from all the electrodes we've been sticking on you." Well, that might not be the case. It could be from, you know, after procedure. So, with more awareness. You know, I think this will also enhance the excellent of patient care. And then 
also allow for positive outcomes. So, you know, again, if you, if, if you find something early, you can get it taken care of. If you wait and wait and wait, you know, then you got big problems. So again, like I mentioned before, you know, the 40-minute fluoroscopy letter, you know, may may not be the correct way of going about this. You know, so so why not change it to two grades of radiation and not base it on time? You know, because you know, again, you may be working on a leg, you know, and and again. You know, watch your watch your AKs and your and your dosage rate. Because like you know, working on a leg, it may be like five, six. Because you you're not going through that much tissue. Whereas you know, your chest, you know, you gotta go through a lot of tissue in some cases. So yeah, so there definitely needs to be more education and awareness regarding radiation safety. Um, you know, as, as I said, as, as time moves forward, you know, we're being, becoming more invasive. Um, uh, last year, I, I, I talked to Missy Rumshack, and she said that uh, cath lab will become, or in her opinion, she thinks cath lab will become the new surgery 10 years from now. And, you know, we're doing more and more cool things. So I don't want to end up like Captain Spock, right? You know, on Star Trek Two, where he dies in the radiation chamber, right? So don't don't end up like Captain Spock. So another thing we can do to protect ourselves is that uh, they make lead hats, uh, they make shin guards, uh, and I really think we need to look into that and you know maybe invest invest into it. All right, so let's see if I can get that, get that playing. All right, so I've got. All right, let's see if I can I can bring that up here. So end show. All right, let's get that YouTube. All right, so so again, so so um, so this is Fat Man, Little Boy movie, okay? So so he's he's playing around with some highly uh, toxic material. This is your story. It is. Yeah. Why do you think they're having marks 
mark where you're at on the floor. All right, just, just think about it. So he said, everybody should make it but me. I'm dead. So, so, so if I back it up, you'll see where he was marking on the floor, where everyone had their shoe prints. All right, so, so, so it's all pointing to the source of radiation. So he was standing right next to it, reached out, touched it, but everybody else was back far enough. So again, time, distance, and shielding. All right. Well, uh, this concludes my presentation. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it, and as well as enjoyed the cheesecake. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go ahead and leave it here. You guys can enjoy throughout the day. And um, I thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. All right. Good job. Thank you.